now we know Bona has declared. But what does this mean for UCLA in 23 through 24? We got you on Locked On UCLA. You are Locked On UCLA, your daily podcast on the UCLA Bruins. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, it finally happened. Adem Bona was bound to make his decision, and he made it. Welcome to the Locked On UCLA podcast. I'm Zach Anderson, Yoxheimer, alongside Max Kelton. Thanks for tuning in and making this show your first listen each and every day. It's free wherever you get your podcasts, available on Apple, Spotify, wherever you listen. Or if you watch on YouTube, like, comment, subscribe, download, comment, whatever it is. Thank you for your support. Become an everyday listener because the content's about to get juicier. Adem Bona earlier this morning declaring for the NBA draft, leaving room there, Max, for a return to UCLA because he cannot participate in any workouts with that shoulder injury that's still been bugging him for over a month now. So what are your thoughts on that and the fact that, hey, he could come back, but now everybody we thought could be gone is basically gone. Well, it opens the door for a return for both Bona and Jalen Clark. I know, Zach, we were talking about it a little bit before the show today, that Mick Cronin is standing with them through that whole process. I'm not too optimistic that those guys return. They were both draft eligible and draft draft caliber players, you know, high draft caliber players. That said, though, these injuries kind of hinder what that that, that draft stealing looks like for these two guys. So, um, I'm excited to see where they land and if they land. I guess that that really should be the real question. But if they don't, do they return? You know, I I think I I'd want Bona back, um, but I think Jalen Clark is, is he's he's going to slip through the cracks. I mean, right now we are in worst case scenario territory, and we are in a total rebuild for this UCLA Bruins team. Yeah, what we're talking about is the tweet UCLA men's basketball put out their graphic. And I think it was a quote from Mick Cronin, and it said specifically at the bottom when discussing that Adem Bona declared for the draft, Cronin kind of specifically said, we will kind of help and, you know, support in in lack of a better word there for both Jalen Clark and Bona. He named those two players, those two guys specifically through the process, kind of alluding to the fact that, hey, they're banged up, they're really good. And if we have an opportunity to bring them back, I think that UCLA, we should all welcome them back with open arms. Bona, I think, uh, we don't really have a clear indication, it seems like, of the shoulder injury. But if it's still a month later from keeping it out, him out from the Sweet 16 game against Gonzaga, isn't able to participate in any of the combine workouts or just in any of the workouts, he's testing the waters. Even Ben Bolch tweeting this out. He's keeping it open. Jalen Clark's kept it open. We haven't heard necessarily about Tiger. I haven't read much about it, but it just seems like the three guys between Bailey, Hawkins, and Tiger, they're they're, they're kind of done, right? They're not done done, but like they want to go play pro ball or see what the next step is. For Clark, it's a little different. He's injured. But for Bona, we both think he needs a little bit more offensive seasoning. You know, got to add some more mix to that game, more consistency, both offensively and defensively, but the athleticism is there, the defense, the hustle, the tenacity, those are all NBA ready. One just wonders how much he's able to communicate that without showing it on the court due to his shoulder injury. Yeah, I'm with you there. And one more thing that we want to, you know, hit hard on is that he didn't say, the Cronin didn't say anything about Amari Bailey. Bailey's the healthy one, right? So there's no sign that Bailey's returning here. Um, I think he's pretty clearly... A, a, a high draft prospect, at least you know, late first round. Um, I think I think is where where maybe his ceiling is. I can see him maybe even going up to twenty two ish. You know, um, that's just where where I I would I would expect. But you know, it, it's pretty clear that Campbell, Bailey, Hawkes gone. The other two guys, there's an opening for them to come back, but it's not something I would bank on necessarily. So now I'm looking at the pieces that the Bruins have right now. And trying to make a, make a roster out of it, and there's still about three or four scholarship spots open, I believe. So, the question is, who do those go to, and then what are the last pieces to the puzzle for Mick Cronin's team next year? Yeah, well, the biggest thing is, I think the question we've kind of started to ask: if, if not when, is Damara going to commit? Is that a summer signee? Is he a late enrollee? 
coming later. Reading more reports, yeah, it's pretty much set in stone. He wants to come to the U.S. and play some college ball before prepping to the 2024 NBA draft. He's supposed to be one of the better bigs. Post products we've been talking about, Mara, 7-3 Spanish product, kind of like Elon Fible, a guy who broke out in the 2022 U-17 FIBA championships, um, but he's from Spain, and it just seems like it's a matter of time that UCLA tries to snag that commitment. I really thought they had Marcus Adams Jr. in the back, so I'm yeah. not trying to say it's going to happen. It could happen. It should happen. All the signs indicate everything I've read from 24-7 sports to everything I've kind of indicated. Ben Bulge, all these recruiting sites have a little leaning now of Mara to UCLA. Will something change? Will somehow some team find a way to snag him at the last moment? But it just seems like the door, the path is clear, right? With Bailey gone and Fiblay coming in, that opened a spot. Stefanovic coming in, almost filling that size and role of both Hawkes and Singleton shooting. With Bona declaring for the draft for now, that leaves UCLA needing a starting big. And if you want to go to Nubo and Etienne, I think they're more role players at this point. Of course, Etienne still fully recovering from that knee injury, and Nuba. Played admirably in the Sweet 16, but it just leaves the door open for some star prospect, whether they go to the portal or what we seem, especially as a 7-3 center right there, that is a prime prospect UCLA can go grab and immediately fill the role that is left with the absence of a Dembona for now, declaring to the NBA draft. Yeah, and I still feel like there's going to be one or two more guys that, you know, kind of burst onto the scene that aren't really on our radar right now that could end up with the Bruins over the next, you know, year or two. And I, I mean, so that, that's, that's what I'm hoping for. Right. And it's, this is all about at this point in my eyes, building momentum, heading into big 10 play. It's a different monster than the PAC 12 next season. And this team no longer based on what we've seen this off season. And let's be frank about it has title hopes heading into next year. Um, that that's, that's very early on. Right. And, you know, some folks say that UCLA is still a top 25 team. I mean, I just don't see how you can make that claim having not seen any of these pieces really play together. We don't know who the starting point guard is. We hardly know who the starting center is. So um, I think that, you know, this team has to try and develop a little bit of chemistry before we can put a ceiling on next year's season. But in my eyes, that ceiling is not a title. Um, And, and again, this PAC 12 is not, you know, it's not an easy conference to be in. So it's going to be a tough year next year as a Bruin fan if they don't click together and get a couple more good pieces. Joe Lenardi's very way, 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 way too early bracketology for 2024, released a day ago, yesterday morning, had the Bruins as a four seed in the Midwest region playing Furman in the first round out in Salt Lake City. And a reminder, next year's tournament, the West Regional Final is in Los Angeles. So if there's ever even a more added incentive, to try and stay home and stay on the West Coast. The West Regional is in L.A. in 2024, but of course way too early, and Lenardi putting that up either with the thought process that Bona's gone or before thinking Bona was coming back. Either way, that's what the thought process is. UCLA top 25 team, they're almost banking on Mick Cronin's coaching ability than they are on who is actually on the roster at this moment. Because what could be funny enough, UCLA having big title aspirations Last year, this most recent season in 22 and in 23, and they both ended in Sweet 16 exits, heartbreak at the end versus North Carolina and versus Gonzaga for very different reasons. And this time, it could be a season where nobody expects anything. And right, how the, what do they do? They come out of nowhere. UConn, I'm not sure what was expected out of UConn this year, and they go and they boat race their way to a title here in 2023. So this could be UCLA story next year. We don't expect anything. I'm not putting any pressure on them. But hey, if there was every year with no expectations to go on a crazy tournament run, next year would be the year. As we're still trying to see what could fill out the roster. We think that next piece is a day, Mara, to be a center, and then the rest could be filled through the portal or last-minute recruits that Mick Cronin grow, goes and pulls out. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, I mean, boy, wouldn't that be a storied run? You know, and, and that that UConn team was so special because at first it was it was the challenge in the Big East, and also it was that experience of having three or four NBA caliber players on that team and trying to put pieces around them. Um, so, you know, they went, they went 17 and 0 against non big East opponents. They were really good in non-conference. So UCLA has to have these young guys show up early on in the season. And that's, that's difficult, man. That's difficult. So, 
there are NBA pieces on this upcoming roster. I think Feeble and and Demara, if if he if he signs, those are two pieces that have some serious talent and could be huge for the next 10, 10 to 20 years if they make the right moves. That said, though, there were a bunch of NBA prospects this year on this roster, and they just couldn't get the job done. So curious to see where Mick Cronin and this uh, this pathway take us. Yeah, a lot of question marks for UCLA. We'll wait for the news that someone commits to the Bruins because they've got some open spots. And heck, still, there's chances that these guys could come back. And Mick Cronin alluded to Jalen Clark and Adem Bona, both guys coming off injuries. One more serious than we realized. Clark may be trying to get back a little sooner than we might have realized. Do they go pro? NBA trainers, does that happen? Or is it? do they come back to UCLA, kind of double up on the NIL, especially for – well, double up for Jalen Clark in the NIL, and then try and get one last chance to boost your draft stock for 2024? Those are all things that will be answered in the days to come. We won't even know till the end of May before they make all those final decisions and the combine and the scouting all happens in the time to come. But speaking about what's coming up, there is a team that seems very solidified in how dominant they could be in UCLA athletics next year. Speaking of youth and unknown from a year, expecting their best player to leave, come back, and then all of a sudden they go make a splash. I think we know who we're talking about, Max. UCLA women's ball, women's basketball is right on par for some big time expectations this year. And we're going to hype them up coming up next on Locked On UCLA. But first, let's talk about the likes of FanDuel because grand slams, no hitters. If you're into double plays, into America's favorite pastime, if you're into the playoffs, the Stanley Cup, you got the NBA, everything in between, there's no better place to get in on all the action than America's number one sports book in FanDuel. Right now, new customers can step up to the plate, get a no sweat first bet up to a thousand dollars back in bonus bets. If your first bet does not win, it's a no sweat first bet for new customers. Go to fanduel.com slash locked on, sign up. Place your first bet and get up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. All you have to do is go to FanDuel.com slash locked on when you joined FanDuel today. I'd, I'd recommend it. FanDuel, make every moment more. They're an official partner of Major League Baseball and sports betting partner with us here at Locked On. Cruising on into segment two of Locked On UCLA, Max, we, we got the unknown that is the UCLA men's basketball team. The known commodity next year, which should get a lot more love in Poly Pavilion, is UCLA women's basketball. Corey Close has been able to put together great recruiting classes. And then, hey, when two starters that were seniors that could have left decided to come back, Cam Brown, highlighted by Charisma Osborne, you had a top-ranked recruiting class. You had the number two recruit in 2022 coming into the last season. And then you go in the portal and grab Lauren Betts, a 6'7", Soon to be sophomore transfer out of Centennial, Colorado, coming from Stanford, who was ranked as the number one recruit in that 2022 class. She comes and joins UCLA, fortifies their post down low. You bring back your best score, your best player, all the freshmen who made great strides from game one to the final game loss to South Carolina. And here the Bruin women are with the chance to truly compete in 23 and 24 in a season that might be dominated by a UConn or an LSU or dare I say an Iowa, UCLA could be amongst that top four. I don't disagree with you. And I actually think that they have a really good shot to be amongst that, that group. You know, I, I think that this team is among the best in the country solely because of, well, it, it, it's, it's, it's a parody between the experience on one side and then on the other side, the youth, right? And you look at that 2022 class. Now the the top two recruits out of that class are on this team. Kiki Rice was number two. Lauren Betts was number one. So both of those recruits in that 2022 class um, are, are going to be playing together. And Rice showed what she could do. Now, Lauren Betts, on the other hand, didn't really have the opportunity at Stanford. She was playing about nine minutes per game. And over those nine minutes, her efficiency was off the charts. She had about six points per game, three and a half boards, but that's over nine minutes per contest. She really didn't have the opportunity to thrive. She didn't, she didn't start at all. And, you know, this, it's, a, it's a team that had two players over nine rebounds per game. So it was no doubt that they had the size. They didn't necessarily need bets, but the Bruins do add her 
to a, an already stable big men rotation with Lena Sontag there and a couple others that have, have proven themselves. But I think Lauren Betts is going to be inserted and immediately she will provide a really great six foot seven frame in the post for the, for the Bruins. Yeah. On February 20th, she put up 12 points, five rebounds against the Bruins. Had even a double figure scoring game against Sacred Heart, a 14 point game against Colorado. Had a three game stretch against Wazoo, who won the Pac 12 tournament, Arizona, who was pretty good in the Pac 12, and then Arizona State, where they where she scored double figures. Had a five out of six game stretch where she was in double figures despite her limited playing time. And she's, I believe, one of three straight Stanford players actually transferring out of this program. So who knows what's going on with the Cardinal? And, you know, good riddance, right? I, I one time accidentally walked in on a Stanford practice when I was waiting for a Stanford men's game on the same court in about 20 minutes, and they kicked me out. So good riddance. They they can go suffer all the losses. She's had enough success over there, Coach Vandeveer. In the meantime, UCLA needs to get some love for Corey Close because bets, you've got all these pieces, right? You talk about the youth. Well, look at how much experience the youth got in one year, right? Between the Hawkeyes, the Kiki Rice, the London Jones, and all the players I'm forgetting. And then, you, hey, You've got Charisma Osborne, who, if she plays even better than she did this year, would be more along with her career averages and would be an even more efficient player. Then you've just got a veteran, savvy player in Cam Brown. And all of a sudden, UCLA has a spectacular roster filled with lots of talent, lots of potential, and the potential that's already slightly been realized. And if, it, if you think about it, Max, I think this UCLA team could have made an outside Elite Eight run, Final Four run, if they didn't get stuck in the side with South Carolina this season in the tournament. Yeah, I, I, I think I think you're spot on right there. And what I like most about this move is that this move is that they already had depth at the guard position, right? You look at the players that are returning. Well, Gina Conti is not coming back. She was a grad student at the transfer out of Wake Forest. Let, let's look at these pieces. Kiki Rice, a freshman. She was the number two recruit in her class last year. London Jones put up some solid minutes, a five foot four freshman at, at guard. Um, Charisma Osborne, of course, leading scorer coming back. And Cameron Brown, another player with some serious experience late in her tenure with the Bruins returning. That's your guard group. So yes, you lose Conti, who's a good guard, but then you needed to solidify what what this group looks like on, on the bigger end of the ball. And I, I think that this is a great addition. You'll see Lena Sontag. You'll see Gabriela Jaquez at a 3-4 a spot. And this is just a great insert. I don't know if they really had a true center that they can they can have, you know, you know, step up. And I think Betts is that player. So really good pickup again for Corey Close. And I think that there there is no ceiling for this team. I seriously think that they are they have they have all the fixings to be a title team. And early on you'll see that next season. They're gonna be great. All right, UCLA women's hoops. They look to lead the charge next year for 23-24 title hopes in UCLA Athletics last year as a Pac-12 Charter member. We're going to cruise on here with Locked On UCLA. Speaking of a team who has number one hopes, this team is already number one, Max. You're going to kind of dive in a little more deeper than I can. UCLA Beach Volleyball. They went from, I think, the number three ranked team after our episode we posted yesterday. I think they leaped to the number one team in the national rankings in a growing sport across the country, beach volleyball which has always played, I believe, what, Gulf Shores, Alabama? Or it's played, the, the title's played in Alabama, and it, it's become a more popular sport. They're adding teams to the tournament. I think soon enough, we could eventually see a time where there's 64 teams in the beach volleyball tournament. That's how much it's growing on the women's side. And UCLA is competing. They're always up near the top. It's UCLA SC, and right now it's the Bruins who are number one in the country there, bud. Well, no doubt about it. And how about a great weekend for this Bruins team? You know, they were up and slow uh, competing at the Center of Effort Challenge, and they went 4-0, three of those wins against top 25 opponents. Two of those wins on back-to-back -back days came against the number one and two teams in the country. And just last week, the Bruins were set up at number four in the country, but now they're, they've, they've already bumped up to number one. Just been so dominant, handed that USC team its first loss in 16 tries, uh, handed TCU, that was the number one team in the country, had been undefeated heading in, first loss of the year. I mean, the, so the Bruins are on an absolute tear right now, 30-2 and two after that terrific week. They move up to first in the country, just leapfrog the other two teams. 
Montserrez and Smith. I hope I'm pronouncing her name right. Montserrat, 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 whatever it is, she she deserves more recognition. Pac-12 player, uh, player of the week in that pair. Um, and this is a, a rel- relatively new pair too. You know, they hadn't played a lot this season. They were just put together last week prior prior to this, you know, this tournament. And now they're six and zero oh this this season, including having a win over an undefeated pairs team with TCU. So many good things for this Bruins team on the on, on the sand right now. And yeah, their 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 title hopes are are well alive. I mean, they 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 just they can't make very many mistakes right now. It's fascinating to see what goes through a year-long growth when it comes to tinkering your roster, tinkering your rotation, when it comes to beach volleyball, tinkering who is in the right pairing, who's your number one, who's your two, who goes all the way to your five. What numbers, what pairings do you feel like are the right duo and where should they slot in and become a very dominant duo? Because you've got to win the three out of five. That's what matters in beach volleyball. you got five matches going on simultaneously all different pairings, and you've got to win those in best two out of three sets. And especially when it comes down to an NCAA tournament, when it comes down to these weekend tournaments, you've got to play well, know how to communicate, and know how to do so when you're tired, when you're playing multiple matches in a day, multiple matches on back-to-back days, and dealing with all sorts of different weather. And when you play the top competition, this is the same team or teams, same duos you may or may not face when you come play in the NCAA tournament in the first, second, whatever round it may be, they tend to have more of a double elimination format in the NCAA tournament than a straight single elimination format. It's kind of win and then double elimination. I'm not entirely sure how the structure is this year, but you got to win, move on, and then it's double elimination. So you've got your chances, but you have to come out and be tenacious and aggressive and know how to play and be right on pace or else you're going to get blown out of the water. I'm with you, and it's a new format this year. It's a 16-team single el- elimination playoff that gets underway May 5th. It's it's the first year that they're doing it, Zach. So you know it, it, this this UCLA team. I mean, as 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 good as any of of the other teams have a chance to win, the Bruins do too, and they're clicking toward the end of the year. Um, Haley Halgren and Riley Powers, 27 and one this year. That would be the best record all time in a single season for any UCLA pair. Um, so this team, like so these are some of the best Bruins to ever step on the sand. And it's really impressive seeing what they can do. And a serious test comes up this weekend um, as they play, again, number the number three team in the country now, USC, then number two when they beat them last week, and the number five team in the country in LMU. But the Bruins have beat the one, the two, the three now, and, and, and the four, five. You know, it feels like you go up and down their roster. They've beat every single digit seed uh, up and down their schedule, I should say. They've beat every single de- digit seed in a matchup, and there's no sign of them slowing down. So you'll see them um, try and make a run this year, and this weekend is a telltale. If they can get another win over a USC team that had been so dominant all year, um, I think it shows that that this team is no joke. And I, I think they've, they've been trying to prove that all season long. Now is just the stretch where everybody's taking them seriously and nobody wants a piece of the Bruins come playoff time. Yeah. The tournament's just around the corner. I believe, as you mentioned, Max, now a single elimination tournament. It had been weird hybrid double elimination, eight teams. It's been all sorts of different things as they've expanded it. And when you expand these tournaments, it means you tinker with it and they're at the tinkering stage. So we'll see how UCLA plays in a a crowded environment where you're just on top, literally on the beach with all the fans and all the players and all the schools watching you, cheering you, booing you, whatever it is. And the pressure is on, on national television, which will be coming up just around the corner in the month of May. So we hope the UCLA women's volleyball, the, the beach volleyball team, I should say, goes out there and dominates, gets another championship. Women's basketball is on the verge of something great in 23, 24. And a lot of unknown question marks for UCLA men's basketball, just like they're on the gridiron. Not as much in terms of lack of players. It's just who is the one that's going to step up and start. We'll talk about all these things and more in the coming days, in the coming weeks. Hey, we'll try and tease a little bit more football. And when there's more basketball moves, we will talk about it. And we've got UCLA men's volleyball. We're going to talk about that with the MPSF tournament coming up for the Bruins, who are a top two team. Max and I will chat about that tomorrow, which is why you've got to become an everyday listener. We try our best to get all the sports in. We try our best to talk as much basketball men's and women's in football as we can. We try to give as much love as we can and give all the best news. So thanks for tuning into the Locked On UCLA podcast. Max Kelton, 
I'm Zach Anderson, Yoxheimer. Thanks for making this your first listen. Hit the subscribe button on YouTube, download the episodes, and put the notifications on wherever you listen to the show. And as always, UCLA fans, hands up. Eight to eight clap time, baby. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. U C L A. U C L A. Fight, fight, fights. This has been Locked On UCLA. Go Bruins.